Good morning, you guys. Hey, welcome back. Welcome to camp day number three. Last night got really cold, but this morning we got a nice fire. We are gonna try to do some cinnamon rolls. Not just any cinnamon rolls, the world's best <laughs> cinnamon rolls, according to me. World's best cinnamon rolls, a cinnamon Dutch rolls oven camp style. We've got this lodge cast iron. We used it for dinner. We did a little beef stew, turned out great. And I've already made the cinnamon rolls, pre-cut them at home. All we need to do is bake them. Um, so it's an adventure. We've, I've never done this before, so you guys are coming along with us on this camp adventure. These cinnamon rolls are special. They only happen on special occasions. So we're extremely lucky that Stephanie has decided to kind of pre-make them and then bring them out here. I think you like froze them or something. Mm -hmm. um, but to have that deliciousness out here in the wilderness when things are a little bit tougher, you miss those little nice, you know, accoutrements. This is going to be fantastic. And we've never done it in the Dutch oven, but the Dutch ovens, y'all, they are an incredible invention. You can basically cook anything in them. You can do pies, you can do um, stews, chilies, the obvious things out of a pot, but the baking styles, casseroles, that's where it is key. And the reason why, you can do that is because of this lip right here, this lip that goes around the edge. You take your coals, you heat them up. You don't have to use actual briquettes. We're going to use that just to be scientific as baking is. And we're going to place them around the edges of the pot, just like that. And then underneath the Dutch oven, there's these legs. So this is the difference between like a camp Dutch oven and like a Dutch oven your mom would have in the kitchen. They have these little legs right here to lift it up off the bottom. Then you can put it over coals in the fire so your heating element is below and on top, creating an oven effect, Dutch oven. So hopefully these cinnamon rolls are gonna come out good. We tried to do biscuits <laughs> without the Dutch oven. I'll let you okay. be the explainer of that. Yeah, so last night we tried to do biscuits, and I, like I said, I already had beef stew going in the Dutch oven, so and we only have one, which we, we should have gotten two. 100%. So I was trying to do biscuits here on this little grate right here, which is a nice little setup for other skillet meals, but for baking biscuits, you really need an oven. You can't do it on a skillet on like a stove top. But the biscuits, y'all, they turned out kind of like, um, kind of like burnt pancakes because they were burned on the bottom and like not so cooked on the top so I ended up having to flip them over and then they were just they were just burned on the top and then you know we put them in some stew and they weren't that bad but they still weren't like those those biscuits that you just want when it's cold and it's chilly and you just want some soul warming biscuits Ooh. so we will continue to try on that so far all the meals have been I would give it maybe eight sevens eights um, for camp meals, they are pretty good, but we've got a ton of meals still planned on the menu, so we're going to keep trying these different ideas that I've got in my head back at the Healthy Chew Kitchen and see if we can bring them out here. So just the regular old briquettes that you get from the grocery store, that's what we're going to be using, but we're using a, uh, a little can with holes in the bottom to just heat them up faster. Uh, this cheap little tool you can get from all the grocery stores as well. And we've made a, a little side section where we can cook on, kind of scoop the coals away from the fire. We've been using uh, fire coals and these coals, but because baking is so specific, we're going to use these, and it's just a lot easier to get them on top as well. We can just kind of pour them over uh, as we see fit. So we'll scoop some of the, uh, the fire coals and lay a couple of briquettes right in here, and then Dutch oven set on top of that and then we will put our briquettes right on top of there and I don't know how long this is supposed to cook that is your department I'm just the fire mm -hmm. fire builder in kitchen OSG <laughs> the makeshift kitchen I'm pretty good though with you. this is bigger than our, our first house kitchen is it this might be bigger than like an apartment kitchen quite possibly Okay, so at home I already pre-made these like I told you guys. I had the wonderful thought pre-making them, cutting them out, and then vacuum sealing them. So they're already like ready to go. I'm gonna grease the bottom of the Dutch oven with a little bit of avocado oil spray, just in case it sticks. But what I found is that um, these cast iron 
liners that Lodge makes. We're going to try these out. So I think this is going to be the juice. Basically what it looks like is like a giant coffee filter. And you just lay it down at the bottom of that Lodge cast iron. And it's basically like a big cooking liner. Woo! It is. It's like a huge coffee filter. Look at that. In case you want some Mondo cup of coffee. So, open that up. What I'm going to do is spray a little bit in here. And then I'm going to put this in there. And then we're going to put our cinnamon rolls in there so that when they're ready, I don't have to like scoop them up or anything. All I have to do is take this out and then it's ready to go. It's like a nice warm bed for your cinnamon rolls. You gotta make them nice and toasty in there. They have to feel comfortable. So we got a biscuit from last night. <laughs> Look at that thing. This is the biscuit I was telling you about. Not so great, right? Not my best work. That was just in the regular yeah, <laughs> cast iron skillet though. You gotta redeem yourself today. You do. <laughs> Okay, so just cutting open the vacuum seal. And they're, when I put them in the vacuum seal, they were frozen and they've kind of softened up a little bit, which is actually perfect. It's exactly what you want. So that they're not frozen when you're cooking them. So the recipe for these guys are gonna be down in the description if you guys are curious. It is my own recipe, so check them out. Briquettes are almost ready. So while we've been waiting for those briquettes to get nice and steamy, we've done a little pour over coffee, cinnamon rolls and coffee. That's the juice. Oh, and the sun is just starting to come through the shimmering aspens. Mmm. No! My coffee almost spilled. <laughs> I almost, my day was almost ruined. Let me find a nice flat spot. Thank you, honey, for finding the perfect rock to set my coffee on. Just trying to take care of you. So what is the formula for mm. baking? Because uh, you have to get this kind of specific. That's why we're using the briquettes. The baking is, like you said, very specific. So Lodge actually has a great reference guide whenever you buy a Lodge cast iron. And it tells you whatever... To... Hold on. Get out oh, smoke. smoke, smoke. Woo! It basically tells you... Whatever degree temperature that you want, it tells you how many briquettes to put under and on top of the lid. So right now we're wanting to do um, three, 350 degree temperature. We have a 10 inch cast iron. So we want to do seven briquettes underneath and we want to do 14 on top. So I don't know, how many did you get, honey? Oh, there's plenty in there. I mean, I'm not as concerned about the bottom. We can kind of sweep some of the, uh, the bottom fire coals. Okay out here, lay it on top, and then we'll put the 14 on top. of these guys on top yes. and we should be prime. But what's most important is getting the temperature from the top going in, because that's what's gonna create that oven effect to really make sure that those cinnamon rolls are baked perfectly to the correct temperature. And they don't turn out like that biscuit that's in there that nobody wants to eat right now. <laughs> <laughs> that poor leftover biscuit. Yeah, it's like we don't wanna throw away a biscuit because we don't have many resources, but Gosh dang, it is burned on the bottom. So we've got a nice fire going here and these coals have, have burned down. We've got these embers, so what I'm gonna do is just scoop some of these really hot embers over here. We want kind of a flat spot for our Dutch oven to sit on. Of that 14 to put on top so Let's see how many that is we'll spread them out evenly one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen that's fifteen that's perfect kind of fit there's like a half one so we'll call that good set the timer all right, so in 20 minutes, we will come back and check on these. So the important thing about baking is that you can't peek and make sure that they're ready or they're coming along on time because then it screws up the entire process and you're letting all that heat escape. So we have to be really diligent and set our timer for 20 minutes and not peek on those cinnamon rolls and then come back and see, well, I hope we did it right. I'm a peeker. <laughs> Are you a peeker? I'm a peeker, I like to peek. <laughs> It's 
really have to watch. It's, it's a lot of watching, you know, normal cooking, you're just kind of, you set it and you leave. But I feel like especially with camp cooking. Well, the temperature varies so much. Yeah, you have to watch like, oh, is this, are these embers going out right here? I need to take some more coals, get one in here. Oh, this is flaring up. It's gonna boil on this side. Yeah, we were dealing with that last night with the stew. <laughs> and uh, with the biscuits, you kind of have to like turn them around. Yeah, constantly having to adjust. Okay, we, uh, we got 30 seconds left. Oh. oh my gosh, okay, those are ready. So they're starting to get a little, a little too brown. Yeah, let's take them off. But those, y'all. Wow. You can see, you can see how it cooked from the top. That's awesome. A little bit of, oh yeah. There's ashes around. See a little bit of ash, so you gotta be careful when you put that lid on. They're still the... kind of tender on the inside, so I think they're going to be perfect, even though one of them turned out a little bit more brown than the other. So that's what we mean by things do not cook symmetrically around here. These look amazing. But we got our eggs to go with it. You did good, this? honey. That smells amazing. I know y'all can't smell it, but woo! Okay, so learning lesson here on the ashes. Um, It'd probably be better next time, like cut around the edge so you don't have the excess paper. Yeah. And that way the ashes don't catch. Okay, cinnamon rolls are out. Bottoms got a little toasty. A little toasty, and there's some there's some ashes to be had. A little extra fiber in your situation there. Normally at home, I would do a cream cheese icing, drizzle them on top when they came out of the oven. Um, but since we're at camp, I wanted things to get a little less messy and the less things you pack, the better. So we used some maple syrup a couple days ago with our pancakes. So we're just gonna reuse some of the maple syrup. It is a bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. Drizzle some on the cinnamon rolls, enjoy with some eggs, and it should be delicious. Mm. Oh yeah. All right, babe, slap me on some eggs on my plate. Give me my coffee and I am a happy camper. Yes, literally. <laughs> oh, okay, honey. Now, you ready for the we ultimate? know that we messed up on the temperature wise. Yeah. That little half nugget I put on top. <laughs> it made all the difference. I, know, I think the top was okay. It was, the I top think it was, was okay. We had too much heat at the bottom. I used the embers from their fire. Now, this portion right here, y'all, hmm. let's just, oh. The inside of the cinnamon rolls cooked perfectly. It was just the bottom that turned out a little bit too cooked. So a couple learning lessons oh for the gosh. next time. I did bring another set just in case that we screwed up one batch. Did you really? Yeah, we've got another one. Perfect. <laughs> oh yes, the insides, when you break into them. Oh no, Mr. B wants my cinnamon roll. No, no, you can't have it. <laughs> <gasps> Oh, those are good, babe. I mean, that is perfectly cooked on the inside. Everybody eats a cinnamon roll a different way. I like to eat from the outside going in, so that the inside is like the best part. But Mr. B really wants my cinnamon roll, and I'm not happy about it. He <laughs> wants in your bonnet. <laughs> Baking is so specific. It is. And actually, another thing that I would do is I sprayed the bottom of the cast iron and then put the uh, liner in. I would put the liner in and then spray the liner because mm -hmm. it kind of stuck to the, the lining just a little bit and we had to cut around that. But all, all good learning lessons, we could do it again. I feel like, I feel confident that we would nail it. Okie dokie y'all, thank you for tuning in to today's video. If you want these deliciousness, if you wanna just cook them at home, mm -hmm. don't forget to go down in the description, check out the recipe. Of course, everything tastes better at camp. Good call on the maple syrup as well, honey. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is gonna be really good fuel for our big, hike today. This is the best weather day that we've had so far on this trip. So we're going to go up high into the mountains and you're going to see a mountain view for the first time with all these leaf changing. It's going to be amazing. So subscribe right here to the channel so you don't miss a single moment of the Lake Life videos, especially these right out here in the woods. Camp goodness. Cheers. We love y'all. We'll see you right here on the next one.